It's okay to be white. The sad battle cry of America's new breed of white nationalist. Cause nothing says we are the master race like being hella passive aggressive. I'm Matt Lieb, and I'm talking about why it's okay to be white, but it's okay to be white is not okay. Last November, a white nationalist catchphrase began to spring up from the bowels of the internet and made its way to college campuses and high schools across the United States. This It's Okay to Be White poster could be part of a national campaign to create racial tension. Turns out the same message was posted on college campuses across the country this past week. This is a worrying development to see posters with a, a, a racist undertone, I think, up here in our schools. The principal also sent a letter home saying that attempts uh, to divide the smart and inclusive community just won't be allowed. Oh, oh, so my soft Nazism isn't allowed? <laughs> well, who's a Nazi now? The phrase, it's okay to be white, has been tied to multiple white supremacists, from a song by a white power band in 2000 to former KKK leader David Duke's Twitter page. It's okay to be white sounds much more innocuous than what they're actually saying, which is, it's okay to be pro-white power. Make no mistake, students, faculty, and media coming out against a racist firing campaign is literally the only correct response. An incorrect response would be something like this. The sentiment, it's okay to be white, is now a hate crime. Okay, so what's the correct position? That it's not okay to be white? Ah, uh, don't worry, you're already in the correct position, Tuck. Bending over backwards for white nationalists. <laughs> Another response was to play down the sincerity of the neo-Nazis on 4chan and frame these posters as just trolling. Amazing now, isn't it? 4chan created another obvious trolling campaign with the purpose of exposing many people's sensitivities. But honestly, what's actually the difference between a troll disguised as a racist and a racist? It's the height of white privilege to see someone posting white nationalist propaganda and be like, now wait a minute, maybe he's just joshing us. Nah. Kim, and you know what? F Josh too. Because some of the posters placements weren't exactly passive aggressive, but overtly racist, like being put over a Black Lives Matter sign, and oh hey, with an image of Trump on it, or the banner that was hung in Washington state. Caught on video, a group hanging a banner that reads, it's okay to be white, right next to a sign remembering Ethiopian immigrants murdered by white supremacists back in 1998. Oh my God, stop being so sensitive. They're just trolling. You know, like the same way the KKK used to troll by burning crosses. Get it? It's a flaming T for triggered. Despite that, to one of the people responsible for actually putting up the flyers, there are two ways to look at it. One is just at face value, like here is a poster, it has a sentence on it, it's just a fact. And the other is like, you put in a whole bunch of context and make a whole bunch of guesses and you play mind reader and then you like get upset at that. I'm pretty sure that's the same logic he's going to use when he explains his swastika tattoo to his mom. Okay mom, there's two ways you could look at this. You could look at it as a bunch of lines connected to make a cool shape. Or you could put a bunch of Holocaust context and play historically accurate mind reader and make me feel bad about it. It's kind of an interesting defense though. If you have no understanding of history or power and remove all context from pro-white sentiment, then sure, maybe it's not hateful. Many of the men and women caught up in today's pro-white movements argue that they're not white supremacists or part of a hate group. They're just so-called white identitarians, those who believe in white pride. Like that University of Nevada student who was caught in this photo at the Charlottesville rally, who swears that despite appearances, he's just looking out for the white race. I identify as an identitarian or as a white nationalist if you want to use the term. I prefer identitarian and I believe that the white culture in the United States is a threat in its own way. Although I'm an identitarian, I'm not hateful. Yes, even though he looks like a duck, acts like a duck, and sounds like a duck, don't be fooled. He's not a duck. He's actually a goose. You know, just in the way he steps. And in the petri dish that the extreme right lives in, devoid of history or context, having white pride is harmless, reverse racism is real, and Black History Month is 28 days of oppression. Which is why, in their minds, even a class that studies racism is, in and of itself, racist. Watch a Fox News host interview this Arizona State student subjected to race studies. A new course offered at Arizona State University is called this, 
U.S. race theory, and the problem of whiteness. The books here, The Possessive Investment in Whiteness, we can show them a couple of them here. Everyday Language of White Racism is another one. The Alchemy of Race and Rights. All of these books have a disturbing trend, and that's pointing to all white people as the root cause of social injustices for this country. Oh my God, stop, stop, dear God, stop. Okay, the problem here is that they are confusing whiteness and white people. In fact, if that student had actually read the books assigned, like The Possessive Investment in Whiteness, she'd see that it opens with the line, opposing whiteness isn't the same as opposing white people. It refutes the entire premise of the segment on page one. Like, how are you going to claim someone else is racist when you are literally judging a book by its cover? Of course, judging every book by its cover is how Tucker Carlson gets away with a thought process that goes like this. Being white, by the way, is not something you can control like any ethnicity. You're born with it. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's white supremacy. But is whiteness an ethnicity, though? Like, what is whiteness? The one thing that all these right-wing ideologues fail to do is define what exactly makes someone white. White identitarians would equate white people as those with European ancestry, and that might make sense if it weren't for the fact that I have European ancestry dating back centuries, and yet because some of those ancestors were Jews, I'm somehow not white? Excuse me? Uh, I bleed mayonnaise, and I one star Yelp reviews. I've talked my way out of traffic tickets while high on Oxycontin. I'm white! The truth is that who is and is not considered white in America is always changing. Think of whiteness as an exclusive nightclub. At first, the only members were people of British, Germanic, or other Saxon ancestry, with all other ethnic groups behind a velvet rope waiting outside and being judged by like a really catty German bouncer who's like, uh, you're not getting in here dressed like that. As decades go by, standards for membership change. The most assimilated groups get into the club of whiteness, while others maybe can work there if they lose the hijab. But the one hard and fast rule of the club of whiteness? Black people can never be members ever. Doesn't matter how light-skinned or how well-educated or the fact that the club was literally built off their unpaid labor, whiteness is specifically designed to exclude them. To quote the possessive investment in whiteness, Africans enslaved in North America faced a radicalized system of power that reserved permanent hereditary chattel slavery for black people. White settlers institutionalized a possessive investment in whiteness by making blackness synonymous with slavery and whiteness synonymous with freedom. That legacy includes things like the one drop rule, which was a crass yet institutionalized term to define blackness as having just one black ancestor, no matter how many white ones you also had. And that's the point. Whiteness only exists in opposition to blackness. It's a power structure. It's the top rung in a system of racial subordination. See, this is why it's important to view pro-white groups through the lens of history. And throughout history, pro-white groups have always bubbled up as a racist reactionary response to black advancement. Reconstruction was immediately met with the founding of the KKK. Calls for black power in the 60s were immediately met with calls for white power. Shouts of Black Lives Matter were immediately met with shouts of All Lives Matter. And the election of Barack Obama was met with the election of a guy who said he could prove Obama was a Muslim born in Kenya, or as Van Jones described, This was a white lash. Whiteness as a construct can't exist without a victim. White identity is a made-up thing, so why buy into it? It's like the worst type of cosplay. When you go around declaring, I'm a proud white man, you might as well be saying, I'm a proud Dracula. Think about it. What are the traits of a Dracula? They're pale, afraid of the sunlight, and generally allergic to spice. And their entire existence depends on victimizing people. Being a Dracula is an inherently hateful identity. People protest white power rallies for the same reason that they'd be protesting a Dracula power rally. Because the entire message of the Dracula power rally is, I want to suck your blood. By the way, you have real ethnic ancestry. Everyone does, and there's nothing wrong with celebrating it. You don't even need to organize rallies because there are already a bunch of European Pride Festivals. Or have you so quickly forgotten your great-grandmother McGurgan? There's the Tulip Time Festival in May celebrating Dutch history. Tartan Day on April 4th celebrating Scottish American pride complete with Shetland ponies and sweaters. Or St. Patrick's Day which celebrates the legacy of St. Patrick through binge drinking. And Oktoberfest in Tulsa, Oklahoma where people gather to watch whatever this is. <laughs> Oh, 
I love it. It's like a cock and spiel. So drop that tiki torch and pick up a bagpipe. Because sure, it's okay to be white. It's always been okay to be white. But it's not okay to be a Dracula. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. My name is Matt Lieb. Uh, follow me on Twitter, and you know what? Follow us on Facebook as well, and why don't you also like and subscribe on YouTube. And you know what? Share it with your friends and family, and get in the comment section and say non-racist things. Happy St. Paddy's Day to all my fellow Irish people. That's right, I got some Irish heritage. Deal with it. <laughs>